Whether you have a stock wheel or an aftermarket wheel, there's nothing worse than bending or damaging one of your wheels. Today we're going to run through five points to help you from damaging one of your wheels. What's going on? I'm Scott from Koenig and before we get into this video, if you wouldn't mind throwing us a thumbs up and subscribing down below. Sometimes when a wheel gets damaged, it's just unavoidable. Maybe that pothole that ran up on you is something that you didn't quite see. But a lot of times wheel damage is preventable. And today we're going to try to go through those points and tell you some of the common things that cause wheel damage and how you can prevent them. So point number one is air pressure. And this is probably one of the most common causes of wheel damage. So let's explain how that exactly works. Remember that a tire is the cushion to your wheel, and the air in that tire is what provides that cushion. So when you start getting air pressure that's lower in a tire, now you don't have as much cushion for that wheel. So when you impact road hazards, daily bumps, you're gonna possibly have issues that could lead to wheel damage. Additionally, the one thing that you wanna consider is that not only are you doing damage to that tire, but that wheel, that cushion, it all comes from the air. So when it's not there, the wheel absorbs more of that impact. And as time goes on, that impact will take its toll on the wheel little by little. But the truth is these things take their toll and sometimes they take their toll immediately. It doesn't mean that every time you hit a pothole, your wheel's gonna be bent or broken, but over time, that could be a problem. And unfortunately, sometimes you could hit that pothole and in a single time, break the wheel. It's all about how much impact the wheel takes. Point number two is road hazard. And while this may seem self-explanatory, you know, don't go driving over things, don't hit things, don't drive through massive swimming pools, which we call potholes. The problem is that we know sometimes they're inevitable. The issue is when you have a stock wheel or you have an aftermarket wheel, time after time, if you hit potholes, you go through things, you could easily damage a wheel. So do your best to scan the road and try to avoid them. Point number three is tire size. This should be self-explanatory, but so many people don't do the right thing about putting the right size tire on your car. Remember, you need to have the right size tire not only for the approved rim width for the wheel that you're putting on the car, but also for the car itself. You need to keep the overall rolling diameter. We've covered that in videos past, but here's where it's different. Remember, that sidewall is the cushion for the wheel. So as soon as you start to short that, lower that, deplete that, now you start to have issues. And here's another point. While it's cool to go up in diameter a lot, remember, the more you go up in diameter, because we're keeping that overall rolling diameter, the one thing you have to understand is that the tire sidewall profile will continue to get smaller with the taller diameter you go. So if you're in an area where there's harsh environment, rough roads, this is gonna be one of those things that you wanna take into account and make sure that you're using a wheel that allows you to have enough sidewall cushion. Point number four. So this one's kind of interesting because it's one of those common things that happens that causes wheel damage, and that is parking. So maybe not parking specifically, but anything in that realm, anything really where you can curb a wheel or impact a wheel laterally. And that basically is taking a hit from the side. So basically what happens here is not only does it make your wheel aesthetically look bad, you could start to do, really do some damage to the spoke of the wheel or the actual outer edge of the wheel itself. Listen, we all know what it's like to curb a wheel, get that wheel bad curb rash. It's disgusting looking and it's obviously something that's avoidable. Here's a tip that I use. The first thing I do is I pull into a space and I make sure that I leave plenty of distance between the car and the curb. The second thing I do is I finalize my park by putting the car in reverse and using the mirrors to help me guide closer to the curb, but without doing any damage. Point number five, it's not really an obvious cause, but it is something that you should consider, and that is load rating. Remember, every car has a specific load rating that it requires. Every wheel is made to a specific load rating. So matching the two is extremely important. Here's how you do it. Go to the door jam sticker that's usually on your front door. You're gonna find a sticker there that's gonna tell you the gross vehicle weight. It will also tell you the front and rear axle weights. Divide the heaviest axle weight by two, and you need to have at least that to be able to put on your car. If you drive in rough conditions or in harsh environments, you may wanna make sure that the wheel that you're choosing has a little bit more excess room and buffer area on that load rating. It just should make the wheel a little bit stronger. But for all you people that are looking for lightweight wheels, remember that load rating often specifically impacts the weight of a wheel. So the heavier load rating that you choose, the heavier the wheel might be. So just keep this in mind. It's kind of a give and a go when you start to pick a wheel for your car. 
So thanks for watching. We hope that the information we gave you here about preventing wheel damage was helpful. And if you wouldn't mind throwing us a like below and hitting that subscribe button so we can bring you more content like this, that would be greatly appreciated. That's it for this video and we will catch you next time.